Well, folks, so many times I get asked how I stay warm when I'm doing late season elk hunting. And by late season, I mean late October, November, December. It comes down to having a clothing system that is designed for all levels of activity and all levels of environmental condition. Because some hunts you're gonna be really active and you're gonna be perspiring. And some, you're not gonna be that active at all and the temperatures are gonna make it pretty tough. And my premise is the longer I can stay out there, the more glassing I can do, the greater the likelihood that I'm gonna find a bull elk. A layering system is about three things. It's about having a base layer that pulls moisture away from your skin. It's about an insulation layer on top of that base layer. And it's about an out outer layer or an environmental layer that protects you from the elements. And all of those have to allow for the rapid transfer of moisture from your skin, from your body, out of that system. So I'm gonna start with your core. This is where all your heat gets generated. Your heart, the mass of your body, this is where the blood comes that's going to keep you warm. So you have to keep a warm core for anything else to stay warm. When it comes to base layers, you really have two options. You have a merino base layer, or you have a synthetic layer, which is this here. There's pluses and minuses to each. There's a good reason why people like merino. Merino is really good at keeping you warm while you are slightly damp. That's the beauty of wool. Merino also doesn't start to have that stink that sometimes happens when you've been sweating and drying and sweating and drying the way that a lot of times some of the synthetics just can't compete with Merino when it comes to stink. But when it comes to moving moisture, synthetics are gonna be better than Merino. So a lot of this is personal preference, but if you're gonna be very active, you're gonna be perspiring and it's cold weather, I would suggest you think about a synthetic. That synthetic is going to take that moisture from your skin, pull it away and push it out of there and keep you warmer. Everybody knows that I've been using Sika Gear forever. So what you're gonna see here in these samples are the systems built by Sitka. Whatever clothing you use, the system is still the same. The principles are still the same. Base layer, insulation layer, outer layer. That's what we mean when we say a layering system. Now, if I was out elk hunting, I would probably leave the truck with just this lighter layer on my body and I'd start hiking because I know that I'm gonna start perspiring within 10 minutes. And I don't wanna have a whole bunch of layers that trap everything in here. So normally I wouldn't wear two. I'd have one of these in my pack so that when I get up to my glassing knob, I can take the damp one off, hang it in a tree, let the wind dry it off, and I'd pull the dry one out of my pack, and that's what I'd put on. So hopefully that gives you an idea of what the purpose of your base layer is. To get moisture away from your skin. Keep it as dry as possible, bring an extra base layer if you can, especially a heavier base layer, because now it'll add a little bit of an insulation layer. And now let's get into insulation layers. Again, you're gonna have two choices with insulation layers, either down or synthetic. The beauty of down is it packs down really light and then it creates this really puffy, thick layer of insulation. The downside, if it gets wet from perspiration or wet from environmental conditions, it starts to go and you lose that insulation factor. Whereas the synthetics, okay, they maybe don't compress as, as light as a down does, but they dry out really quick. So you don't have the risk of losing your insulation factor for a long period of time just because of a little moisture. 
again, it's your personal preference based on probably more of the conditions you hunt in and figure out what's working for you and your hunting style. And the whole idea, if you think about how your house is built, right? You have a two by six wall. The idea is to create an air pocket there with insulation to trap air to keep it warm or to keep it cool. In the summertime, you want to keep it cool, but in the wintertime, you want to keep it warm. And your, your clothing system, your layering system, kind of does the same thing. But there's a couple things to think about when you're doing this. If you've ever put on a really tight garment, you lose the insulation factor because you stretch that garment this way and shrink it from this way. And I don't care if it's your gloves, if it's your base layer shirt, whether it's your insulation layer, if you have items that are too small, you're gonna lose those air pockets that provide that insulation factor. If you're a large, okay, don't get a medium. If you're an XL, don't get a large. Get what is properly fitted in length, in dimensions. It's super important if you're gonna have these insulation layers. So now let's get to an outer layer. An outer layer is gonna have some critical components to it. In this case, it's a very durable fabric. This is a Jetstream jacket by Sitka. It has a windproof liner to it. And that is huge because your insulation layer very seldom will have any wind inhibiting properties. So you need something to keep that wind off you. It also is going to be built with some sort of liner that has a really rapid moisture transfer factor. And it's going to have a very good DWR finish. In other words, a water repellency finish to it. And probably a really good hood. So this is what's going to go over those insulation layers. It's going to protect you from the snow and from the cold. And wind. The next part, the next most important part after your core is going to be your lower body. By that I mean your pants and a base layer for your pants because there's a ton of blood flow that goes through there and it's going to your feet. So on your bottoms, again, you're going to want something that gets the moisture away from your skin or something that you're comfortable with that you're going to be in the backcountry for a week and you don't want it to start stinking you're again gonna have the same choices for your base layers. Either a merino like this or a synthetic. That's what's gonna go underneath your environmental layer. Very seldom does it get cold enough that I need an insulation layer for my bottom. Sometimes I'll carry it with, but mostly we're talking a base layer and some sort of really good pant that has a, again, a very durable finish, maybe knee pads. That's what is in this, these pants. These pants have a waterproof butt. They have a very thick, almost windproof, I, I never say windproof, but wind inhibiting fabric to it, very durable. You put this on over a base layer and you're gonna be really, really warm. Sometimes when I'm hiking up to my glassing spot, I don't have this base layer on because I know I'm gonna be perspiring. I have this in my pack. And when I get up to my glassing spot and it's starting to get cold, then I pull this out of my pack. I put them on and then I pull my pants back on over the top of this. With that, we've kind of talked about the core as the primary area the lower body, and now we're gonna talk about extremities. I'm gonna start with the head, and I'm gonna go to the hands and fingers, and then I'm gonna go to your feet. Because when you're hunting in cold weather, the very first places that get cold are your hands and your feet. Your head helps keep everything else very warm. When I'm trying to keep my head warm, it starts with a hood. You lose a lot of heat coming out of your neck up from your torso. So the base layers that I use have a hood on them. And you, sometimes that, just that is enough. 
but sometimes it's not. So my jet stream jacket, my outer layer, has another hood. And that's usually enough, but sometimes it's not. If I can keep my head dry, that will usually work. But every once in a while, that won't work. So I want something with a lot of loft and insulation. And yeah, I'll have to forgo the ball cap. But now we're talking really, really warm. And if the wind's getting to me, now my head is really toasty. So by keeping my head warm, I'm not gonna lose all this heat right through here. All of this heat that's trying to come up through my hood gets trapped in here and I'm gonna stay pretty warm. But now I'm gonna talk about your hands. If you look at my hands in this position, look at all this surface area, right? Every place there's surface area, those of you who study heat loss or heat transfer, you know that the amount of heat loss is a function of surface area. Now, if I go like this, now I only have this surface area. What's the difference? One's a glove, one's a mitten. When we're talking cold weather, we're talking mittens, okay? Some of you see me wear the old style chopper. You know, I've been wearing these since I was a kid, but they're a mitten. Because with a mitten, you can convert your hand into one mass. You can reduce that surface area even further. And then you got these magic little things. Now you can take them out and you can drop them in your mitten, just like this. And there's enough room in there for that to be in there, and it's really, really warm. Now, a lot of people will say, well, I can't shoot my rifle with a mitten. Have you ever tried shooting your rifle with a glove that you're trying to get off, or you can't get off, but your fingers are really, really cold? Doesn't work very well. If I have a mitten, and my hands are nice and toasty warm, boom, that's how quick it happens. You can do it really, really quickly. The other beautiful part about a mitten is if you think about where most of the blood is closest to the surface on its way to your hands, it's right here around your wrist. Most gloves are not going to give you much protection around your wrist. A big full cuff mitten, your wrist is nice and warm. Your hands are going to stay nice and warm. And the beauty of a mitten like this is it has a waterproof, windproof outer shell and a removable inner liner that you just pop out and you can dry that liner out. I, I can't tell you how important it is to have warm hands and warm fingers. The last part we got to talk about to stay warm are your feet, okay? These are a pair of non-insulated mountain guide boots from Kenetrek. You can see they've been conditioned, they've been waxed. So just that wax provides one layer of protection from the wet snow, from dew on the grass, stuff like that. As quick as you start hiking, your feet start to perspire. In fact, as quick as you jump in the truck and drive to the trailhead, your feet start to perspire. So don't wear your hunting boot to the trailhead. Wear some other type of boot like this, okay? Something that you can slip on and off real quick. Then when you get to the trailhead, now is the time to put a fresh sock on. Don't take the sock that you've been wearing on your way to the trailhead or wearing around camp because that sock's already starting to get damp. And remember, it's all about moisture management, especially with your feet. So you get to the trailhead, you put a fresh pair of socks on, you put this boot on, you lace it up, and then you get yourself a gaiter. And you might say, gaiters? If it's wet, rainy, you're gonna want gaiters. If it's snowy, you're gonna want gaiters. And here's why. How many uh, times have you been walking around and you get like ice buildup on the cuff of your pants? 
Well, when that ice starts to build up, what it is is there's a little micro environment here where this heat is melting that snow and it's turning into ice. And pretty soon it starts working its way up your pants, right? And when it gets far enough up your pants, it hits the top of your sock. And then when it hits the top of your sock, because it's warmer and wetter on the inside of the pant than the outside, you get moisture in that sock and it starts working its way down your boot. And pretty soon you've introduced more moisture into your boot than just the perspiration. So all it takes to solve that problem is a gator. A gator is the element that is gonna keep that snow, that moisture from getting into your pant, to your sock and down into your boot. And I go so far as I carry an extra pair of dry socks up the mountain with me in my pack. Because sometimes I'll be hiking for an hour and a half or two hours. And if I can just swap out socks, I'll get to my glassing spot, throw my glassing pad down, I'll sit on it, I'll pull my boot off, and I'll let a lot of that moisture, the heat of my boot, my boot's still warm, that moisture will go whoo, quickly. Put on a fresh pair of socks. Once I get to the point where, okay, my boot's about as dry as it's gonna get, I put it back on, I put my gator back on, and now I have warm feet for the rest of the day. And that's how you do it, folks. If you wanna shoot more elk, you gotta spend more time up on the mountain behind your glasses in these late seasons. I'm talking the post rut of late October, the late season of November and December. It's about time spent out in the hills. And to spend more time out in the hills, you have to be comfortable. And that's all about managing moisture, building insulation layers, and protecting you with an outer layer. It's all about a system, a layering system. Hopefully that helps a little bit. I know it's a long video, but we get so many questions about this. I thought I'd take the time to give you the explanation of how it works for me. Thanks for watching.